Hey there, welcome to how to become a six-figure coach with all of the training you'll ever need to be a world-class coach. All that we ask is that you subscribe to the channel and enjoy your video. Peace, Jordan here. It's great to be with you today. Scope of Coaching. It's a brief, quick video for you here on really explaining uh, at, at a high level what we can and cannot do. What's our scope of work? Like what can we do and what can't we do? And who we're not is a big one. Now, every state and country is different. So you should check with your state, your country, your province to see if coaching is something you need to be licensed for or have a business permit. But for the most part, coaching and the way we teach pro coach, uh, you can go and teach organizations, individuals, groups, what have you, profit, nonprofit, doesn't matter. And uh, you don't need a license per se, right? You need an LLC, things we talked about previously about setting up a very simple business. But here's who we're not. We're not therapists, okay? We're not licensed anything as far as clinical because we're just not clinical folks. Now, could we dive into some psycho, you know, psychology and, and behavioral change and, and the evidence and read white papers? Of course you should. I'm going to teach you. I've read hundreds of white papers. I'm certified in a bunch of different things. I'm going to share with you some evidence-based tools that really, really push the needle with a healthy client. But on a clinical on a clinical standpoint, we are not clinicians unless you are already, which is which is great because we have clinicians within ProCoach that uh, you know they they do certain clinical things and want to be a better coach. So they learn how to be a coach from us, but they learn how to be a clinician with by some and clinicians is a broad broad topic. So we're not therapists, right? We deal with healthy people, and uh, if you detect that somebody is having a major problem breakdown, uh, any kind of. Uh, mental, clinical issues, you got to send them to a licensed professional. We'll talk about that. So therapists, they have an understanding of past trauma. They've done a lot of work. They mostly have PhDs, which means they've done a serious amount of homework and, and they've really proven themselves in their field to be adequately prepared to deal with uh, people with major mental, physical issues, all right? And then uh, they do suggest solutions, and so do we, but a therapist is a licensed professional. Most states and provinces, they're not like coaches the way we coach, okay? And we don't deal with sick people. We just won't, all right? It's just not what we do. I've had coaches of ours go down that path. They've regretted it. They should have never done that. We're not there for that. We're here to, to help healthy people that want to get to a certain level in their life, in a, in a certain topic or arena in, the, in life, and, and we can totally do that. But if they're hurt and they're beat up from the past, things like that, we can't help, okay? okay we, we can help a little, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend going too deep there. So best practices, you need to screen prospects. So we're going to have a screening process. I'm going to teach you about that. It's an evidence best. But if you find that after you've screened a, uh, you've screened a, a client, prospective client, and <clears throat> things don't add up, you see this person's fairly disturbed or they have some deep-rooted issues, find licensed professionals to refer. Meaning, maybe go meet them. I've done this in many towns of mine where, uh, well, I could do one thing. You know, you can recommend they find their own person. You can't help them. You have a lot of respect for them, but you won't be able to help them. We won't be able to have a client coach relationship for what they're trying to do because you really determine, and we're going to teach you a few tricks there, that, you know, they're not, they're not, you, you can't help them. You need a therapist. You need a licensed clinician, okay? So it's nice to have a couple in your back pocket, people you trust, you've spoken with. Maybe you've been on a Zoom call a couple times and they'd be happy to get your referral, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes you can get a kickback. I do it for free. Sometimes somebody will give you $100 for a referral, things like that. I wouldn't do it for the money, though. I wouldn't recommend that. So make sure client agrees. So before you recommend somebody call the client, which I would never advise, I would always just say, hey, are you open to feedback? Are you open to my recommendation? If they say yes, only if they say yes, then you can say, look, I know a great therapist, psychologist, Dr. Henry, whatever, <laughs> here's his number. I won't tell him you're calling unless you want me to, but you can go ahead and set up an appointment on your own. I know he does free consultations, so on and so forth, okay? So make sure the client agrees. And if not, just decline that, decline the the offer that you've made them or about to make them. Say, look, I'm so sorry, we won't be able to work together. I wish you the best of luck. <clears throat> Excuse me. When in doubt, ask a colleague or text us. 
I, I've literally said it all in the past 30 seconds, but if ever you get caught up, you can text us. We're not going to give you legal advice, but if you're like, hey, I'm in a jam, well, I always say, look, ask for permission to give a phone number out to a client, meaning to the client, hey, client, are you open to feedback? Are you open to a recommendation? If they say yes, my recommendation is you go see Dr. Henry. He does a free 30 minutes or he's, he's fairly inexpensive and very qualified. I've looked into them. Do your own research, client. But here's somebody that I would trust with my family. And then, you know, see what they do after that. Honestly, we're accountable to them, not for them. They have to go out to the world and get the help that they need. Never misrepresent yourself. So many times I took uh, an extensive class on nutrition, but I am not a dietitian. Right, so I can definitely speak on the evidence and the best practice and a lot of the a lot of the science behind nutrition, macro and micro and micronutrients, things like that. But I cannot write you a meal plan. And many of those nutrition coaches, they forget that they're not dietitians and get themselves in trouble. As an example, I'm also a behavioral specialist, where I, a behavioral change, I can help like a like a little level deeper than. The average person with a little bit of a problem, I can go a little deeper with them and get them out, get get them get them out of the mud a little bit better, and I can put them on a, a little bit more specific plan. By the way, I'm going to teach all of that to you, so you'll have that. You won't have to go get certified or anything. You'll have all those great tools, but don't misrepresent yourself being a therapist or a clinician in any way. Get yourself in big trouble. This includes marketing, social events, what have you. So on your card, on your this, on your that, don't claim anything you're not. If you're a graduate of Pro Coach, you should plaster that on all of your stuff. But Pro Coach, we don't claim to be clinicians here. We claim to be ongoing practitioners of coaching, world class coaching, and the most advanced coaching in the world. And uh, we will keep doing that. Okay. But at the end of the day, we don't pretend that we're clinicians. All right. So keep proper records. Okay. Soap notes are very, very important. And we're going to talk all about soap notes down the road. Don't worry about them. It's just a, a, an evidence based way to keep just a. After every coaching session, keep a little bit of a note, a little bit of a diary on what happened. Not too elaborate, all right? There, it's an objective. There's there's subjective and objective notes, which is the SO of that, and I'll teach you all about that. Um, and then we we kind of, uh, you know, we take action steps and planning and all that good stuff, but I'll teach you all of that down the road. Uh, ask a lawyer before launching anything past what we're teaching you today. And anytime you see somebody in trouble, just ask them for permission to offer you feedback on possibly ending the relationship or continuing it, but having them go see somebody else about something you might have uncovered, and this will happen, where you have a fairly healthy human being, you hit a certain topic, you're a good coach, you dig, you have great conversations, you ask great questions, something comes up, and you see that you've hit a nerve, there's some disturbance, and it might be appropriate for them to go see a professional. It's totally up to them, though. We can't, you know, it's a free world, so you got to do, they got to do what they got to do. So empirical code of ethics, I will do zero harm. So this is a universal physicians take that, that, that whole, you know, make that promise. So do we as pro coaches, we will do zero harm. Never to our, we should never try to, to do something with a client to benefit us, all right, except for, you know, making a living and getting paid for our services. But aside from that, Zero harm. That's what we're. That's what we're in it for. Okay. We'll. We'll. Whenever. Whenever in doubt of an action or a question or whatever it is you got going on with a client, will this cause harm? If the answer is yes, you don't do it. Okay. I will be loyal. Loyal. Yeah. Total loyalty to the client to the process. Really, when you're with them during that hour, fifty minutes, two hours, whatever, for three months, six months, a year, ten years, whatever. I know co coaching clients have been with with them for literally ten years, and I have a coach right now. I'm at my eighth year, something like that, and uh, I have one that I actually still kind of tap into, going over ten years. So I will be loyal. I will be responsible. So there's a difference between accountability and responsibility. Being responsible to get things done, we're responsible for our client trying to keep them on track, but the client is accountable to report back on what they've done, action steps so we can measure, so take a look at those KPIs and really see that they're making movement in the, in the towards their vision, right? So, but we are responsible for the care, for the loyalty, for the zero harm. We're responsible for our clients. And I will protect privacy. So if I do a little note, it's not going to be laying on my desk. If I do a little note, it's going to be digital. 
on a on a on a secure server with a password. What I mean is that is it Google like a Google Doc where you you only have that password. It's up in the cloud. It's encrypted. Is it uh, in files online uh, on your uh, or on on your desktop? But do you have secure like nobody can get into that desktop but you with your password? I would recommend that. I've never had anybody check up on me. I have thousands of notes, thousands of soap notes. Nobody's ever asked me for them, but you know, and soap notes are great. Not we'll teach you why they're great uh, to, to be a great coach. They help you be a great coach. I will be inclusive. I think in this day and age, we understand that no matter who that person is, if they have the financials to to if they if they are able to support a coaching relationship financially and they are willing, nothing else matters. You should be able to help them as long as they're ethical and 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 their behavior is legal outside of of everything. But you see what I mean. Don't change your pricing. You say, oh, this person's rich. I'm going to charge them $10,000. Oh this, oh, this person, I really don't want to work with that person. I'll charge them $15,000. You see where I'm going? Be very, very ethical in your pricing. The pricing should be the same. And uh, I mean, it's your business. You can do what you want. These are just recommendations that I, I, I tell all my students. So I will stay within my scope of practice. We went on and on about that. Big deal. So scope of the agreement. So we're going to have an agreement. I'm going to share my agreement with you. You're welcome to use it. Have your lawyer check it out. Just double check. Make sure you feel good about it. I have never had a legal issue with a client to date after 25 years or so. Nobody's ever sued me or come back at me or done anything because I've always I have, I've always operated within that, lex, that last slide we, we showed you. So unilateral. So what that means with the agreement and the relationship basically is what we're saying here. It's one person reaching goal. It's not both of us. I am engaged in helping the client. Two, systematic, objective-based. So we are going to set a very objective vision and a very objective plan and action steps and tactics that we're going to utilize and processes that we're going to utilize. They're very objective. They're measurable. There's integrity in the process. That's why we're professional friends, right? Does a professional friend talk like this? No. Uh, that a regular friend talk like this? No. This is almost like you're becoming the leader because you need to be the leader of the relationship. Three, explicit, clearly formulated. We lay everything out to the client. They understand clearly. They have the opportunity to ask questions, challenge. We have the opportunity to ask questions and challenge. But in the end, it's a clearly formulated and explicit plan. Hey, I will be helping you do this by this date, by doing these actions, and I am here for you, I'm here to support and develop you on your journey, and we're going to move forward. After that, scheduled with a clear end. So if it's a 90-day format, 90 days. If it's six, six months, that's great. I do annual coaching nowadays, so there's a, an entire 12 months, and there's a closing date clearly stated on when we are done, whether we've achieved or not. That's all depends. And then there's also a renewal process that I, we're going to teach you if we want to continue the relationship, which many of many of them do. So that was scope of coaching. I know it was a little bit serious. Let's loosen up a little bit. It's okay. Check with your local labor laws and your business bureaus and things like this in your state, province, country that you're in. For the most part, as far as I know, we have lots of students. It's okay to be a coach. Open your LLC. You have your little website. You don't even need that. You need your LLC, basically, to operate. And then you can go out and coach. But this is not a video that you should ignore forever. You should come back to this uh, every now and again to just calibrate. Am I, am I where I'm supposed to be? Am I really living by a great code of ethic? Uh, do, do a screenshot of that slide. Re, you know, re, Rewind the video. This is a big deal because if you don't, Live by those rules, you might get in hot water. You might get in trouble. The reason, again, I've never been in trouble is because I've really lived everything I just kind of showed you, right? And that's a big deal. So I'm Chase Jordan. This was the Scope of Coaching. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.